Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Ford stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Ford is an automaker founded by Henry Ford. It sells automobiles and commercial vehicles under the Ford brand and luxury cars under the Lincoln brand. The company is headquartered in Dearborn, Michigan and was founded in 1903. It started trading in 1968 and can be found on the New York Stock Exchange, Mexican Bolsa, Deutsche Börse, London Stock Exchange, Zitra, Vienna, Euro TLX, Swiss, Kazakhstan, and Sao Paulo Stock Exchange. Ford also owns Brazilian SUV maker Troller. They own an 8% stake in UK company Aston Martin and they own 32% of Jiangling Motors in China. It also has joint ventures of Ford in China, Taiwan, Thailand, Turkey, and Russia. It introduced methods for large-scale manufacturing of cars and large-scale management of industrial workforce using elaborately engineered manufacturing called assembly lines. By 1914, these methods were known around the world as Fordism. Ford is the second largest U.S. automaker behind General Motors and the fifth largest in the world behind Toyota, Volkswagen, Hyundai, Kia, and GM. During the financial crisis at the beginning of the 21st century, it struggled financially to the point of collapse, which was in large part prevented by President George W. Bush announcing his emergency financial rescue plan to help Ford Motors, as well as Chrysler and GM, make immediately available $13.4 billion to the automaker. Ford has since returned to profitability. The company filed a patent to charge electric cars by towing them behind another vehicle. Vehicles could be charged at all times when being towed. Ford filed the application in December 2020 and it was published this month. It is unclear if Ford has plans to put charging while towing into action. Automakers often file patent applications without clear plans for use. This could be the next step for its 2021 Ford F-150 Power Boost Hybrid and all-electric 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning, which uses a battery pack to power tools and electronics or in the case of the Lightning, provide emergency backup power during outages. Ford is number one in truck sales in the US with a 32% market share. The F-150 Lightning EV truck is getting a lot of attention and they are likely to control the EV truck market. The price starts at $40,000, which is an amazing deal. It does go up to $90,000 for a fully loaded truck with the longest battery range. You also receive a $7,500 federal tax credit. You may be able to get a Ford EV F-150 truck cheaper than a gas-powered Ford F-150, which is unheard of. Ford said the reason it kept the cost down is because of economies of scale. The company makes so many F-150 trucks and the gas-powered truck is not that much different than the EV-powered version. Ford makes a lot of vehicles, but Ford makes more F-150s than every single Tesla model combined. That's why they can keep the cost down and maybe give Tesla a run for their money in the EV space. The company plans to sell the Lightning in spring 2022. Tesla's EV truck has gotten a lot of negative reviews based on its odd design, as you can see here. Ford conducted a survey asking people what they'd miss most about internal combustion engine vehicles, and 70% of the people said the gasoline smell. It has developed a gasoline-scented fragrance for EV owners to help them make the transition to battery power. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 54 billion market cap. They're trading at $14 a share and they have 4 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So their free cash flow more than tripled from 7 billion to 24 billion. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that was negative in 2020. They did have a small positive in 2019, but it's up to 4 billion in the trailing 12 months. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that's dropped a lot from 160 billion to 129 billion. But Ford, like most companies, has struggled in 2020. But I expect their sales to go up a lot more this year, and even more so next year. I think they have a shot at $200 billion of sales in 2022 with their new EVs. Even at their lowest number, $127 billion of sales, that's more sales than if you summed up every single year of Tesla since they started. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue of the sales. 
Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Cost of labor is a big cost of revenue for the company. Also the cost of the materials that go into making the cars. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit. That was $24 billion in 2018, but it's improved a lot from 2020 to the trailing 12 months. Below that is operating expenses, and marketing is a big operating expense for the company. And then below that is operating income, and their operating income peaked in 2018 at $12.7 billion. It's currently about $7 billion. They do have a lot of debt. They paid over $9 billion of interest on their debt. But since they have so many investments in other companies, they receive a lot of earnings from those investments. That's why their other income and expenses are so high. It's almost $6 billion. So the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which was the highest in the trailing 12 months at close to $4 billion. It was negative in 2020. Their sales were lower in 2020, plus they had $1 billion more of interest payments in 2020 compared to the trailing 12 months, because the past few months they've been paying down a lot of debt. So their net income was negative in 2020, mainly due to those things. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash, because net income is your accounting profit or loss. It's not actual cash. So you can see they generated the most cash flow in the trailing 12 months, over $29 billion. They're doing a great job at becoming more efficient and bringing in more cash. And that's the most important thing when you run a business, is how much cash you can generate. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Manufacturing companies tend to spend a lot in CapEx because they have to buy factories and expensive equipment. So they invest about $5 billion to $8 billion in their company every year. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And they had a lot of free cash flow in a trailing 12 months, almost $24 billion. So they paid down $16 billion of debt in a trailing 12 months. That's the big red flag for this company, the amount of debt they have. But if they can chip away at that debt, they'll be in a lot better position going forward. This is the equity section of the company's balance sheet. So you can see they raised $22 billion from issuing stock. And they took that investment and made $21 billion of profit since they started as a business. Retained earnings is a sum of all your prior net incomes minus the dividends you pay out. So it's really good to see that they're a profitable company. They also bought back 1.6 billion of treasury stock. So this reduces their equity balance 1.6 billion. They also had $8 billion of losses that are not tied to retain earnings. So they do have a good balance sheet, almost $34 billion of equity. Let's look at the capital structure. They have $154 billion of debt, 34 billion of equity. They're 82% debt, 18% equity. It is a bit concerning seeing so much debt. But as long as they can pay the interest payments on their debt, it's okay. Plus, they have a lot of cash on their balance sheet. Their net debt is $108 billion. So they have over $40 billion of cash. That's a lot of cash. And their weighted average cost of capital is 12%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's $167 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $151 billion. We divide that by 4 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $38. They're trading at $14, so they're trading at a 64% discount. It's a strong buy according to the model. I did a video on Ford back in January, six months ago. They were trading at $865. I valued the company at $14, and they're almost at that price right now. If my valuation is on target, I would expect it to take about a year to hit that number. They did it in six months. So the valuation is constantly changing. Every day the valuation can change because news comes out about the company. It especially changes each quarter when they report their financials. The reason I'm so bullish on this stock right now is because I really feel they're going to take over the EV truck market and that's going to catapult them to huge profits. Simply Wall Street values the company at $24, so they're saying it's 44% undervalued. 15 analysts priced this stock and the average price target was $16. This is where the stock has been trading since 1984. So you can see it broke through $30 at one point. The stock price came down a lot during the 08-09 recession. And the stock price came down a lot last March during the COVID crash. So I know a lot of people say buy the dips. That's where you can make the most money. But the problem is we never have cash to buy the dips. All our money is already invested. Who sits on cash and doesn't invest the money? I rarely sit on cash. If I have cash, I invest it. I hate having cash. 
I guess I could just sell stock I currently own to buy the dip in other stocks. I just have a hard time selling stocks. You kind of get married to those stocks. Whether the stock is doing really well or really poorly, it's hard to sell them. So this is the stock price in the last 12 months, and the stock has more than doubled. In the past year, it's one of the best performing large cap stocks. And their beta is 1.14, so the stock moves a little more than a market. The stock has doubled in the past 52 weeks, much better than the S&P 500. The low was 640, the high was 1645. And the stock is coming down a little bit. It's below its 50-day moving average, but above its 200-day moving average. This is a really liquid stock. 50 million to 80 million shares are traded each day. Almost all the shares outstanding are on float. Half the shares are held by institutions, and less than 2% of the shares are shorted. And the stock has gone up 100% in the past 52 weeks, which is worse than its industry, much better than the market. And the stock is also underperforming its industry in the past 3 years and 5 years. The only reason the industry average is so high is because of Tesla. If you take out Tesla, these numbers would be much worse. Analysts are forecasting their earnings to grow 17% and their revenue to grow 7%. If their revenue grows 7% and Tesla's revenue grew 22% on an actual dollar basis, Ford's revenue would have grown so much more than Tesla's. In the past five years, their earnings have struggled down 41% on average. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends when you did receive a dividend, you'd be at $16,000 today. That's a 4.5% annual return. State Street is the biggest shareholder at 9%. Vanguard owns 300 million shares. BlackRock's valuation is $3.8 billion. Then Newport, then Geode. Let's look at their financial ratios. They have amazing price multiples. Their PE is below 15 at 13.7, much better than the market median average. Their price of sales is below 0.5. If a company has a price to sales ratio of 0.5, that means its revenue is double its market cap. They're better than 0.5, they're 0.4, so their revenue is more than double their market cap. And their price to book is 1.6, so they have a great balance sheet. So if you're a big fan of price multiples, this indicates the stock is really undervalued. Their return on investor capital is a bit low at 4.2%. I like to see at least 15-20%. I'm pretty confident this number will improve a lot at the end of this year, definitely next year. Their interest coverage ratio is below 1, but once again, I think this number will improve. They have a great ROE at 12%, much better than the market median and average. But when you have a ton of debt, it makes your ROE look great, because the lower your equity, the higher your ROE. They have a good current ratio at 1.2. They also have a good quick ratio at 1.1. Quick ratio is when you pull out the inventory from current assets. And they have $46 billion of cash, $51 billion of receivables, and $12 billion of inventory. So the company is well capitalized. They had $24 billion of free cash flow in a trailing 12 months, $20 billion of working capital, so they have over $40 billion of funding. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 13 other companies in the same industry as Ford. And if Ford has a number in blue, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. So they're better in all the price multiples. This industry has pretty weak price multiples, mainly because there's so many new EV companies, and new companies tend to have weak multiples. They do have a good current ratio at 1.2. The average company in this industry has negative earnings, so they have negative ROE, but they have positive ROE. They are a lot higher in debt than average. And they're a big company, 54 billion market cap, but the average is so high because Tesla really drags up the average. Toyota has a pretty big market cap, over 200 billion. And the last time Ford paid a dividend was back in January 2020. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 64% discount. I'm really bullish on Ford. I've been bullish on them for a few years now, but I'm even more bullish that they're coming out with the EV truck next year. I'm pretty sure that will be a game changer for this company because they control the regular truck market the Ford F-150 is the biggest truck in the world. It sells more than any other truck. Plus, they also sell the Ford Bronco, which is in the top 10 in truck sales as well. So for all the people who buy trucks, it's going to be a really easy transition to get them to buy EV trucks. And if someone owns an EV truck and is really happy with it, maybe a family member of theirs will buy a regular Ford EV car. So I think there's a good chance they'll be number two in EV sales, possibly number one, because they sell so many more cars than Tesla. And if they can just convert 10% of their customers to EV sales, that would be a huge number. I rank their free cash flows 10 out of 10, their revenue 7 out of 10, and their ratios 9 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.